Good afternoon and welcome to the CIS webinar. Uh, CIS, the International Center for Sports History. And CIS is the International uh, Center for Sports Studies uh, and it's based in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. So today we will, uh, we will have our 11th uh, uh, webinar. Uh, the, 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 please do not forget that you can always connect with us, see our webinars uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the evening on, on YouTube and as well ask questions if you have, if you see it live. Uh, we are very, very keen to, uh, to, to be in touch with our, with our uh, listener. One of the main uh, ideas of uh, the CIS webinar is to, uh, to, to develop the dialogue between uh, uh, the specialist on, on sports research from the FIFA master, from all the core CIS as worldwide, uh, and uh, uh, with our uh, speakers as well in, in our different course, together with, with people who are interested in sport. And uh, we have been very pleased to see that uh, many people enjoyed our, we, we had a lot of uh, testimonies of people who enjoyed it. And we would like to really thank you for your interest and your remarks. And if you have any remarks, please subscribe. Uh, well, today's, uh, today's uh, uh, webinar will be about one very, very uh, central topic of the current period, the relationship existing between esports and sports. And uh, we believe that the dialogue between the two is becoming more and more necessary with the, the COVID, but it's a, it's a complex dialogue. So let me introduce uh, the, our, our uh, three speakers. I will, uh, speak, uh, I will start uh, with uh, 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 Alex Cabot. Uh, Alex is uh, a former uh, CIS uh, FIFA Master alumni from uh, uh, the 12th, 12th edition, am I right? Wow. Alex is Canadian uh, and uh, uh, is currently working uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, with, a, with a company who is involved uh, in and in investing in, uh, in uh, electronic sports. Uh, Alex, how are you? How is the situation in, in Montreal? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks again for, uh, to CIS for, for having me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be speaking about eSports. It's something that, as you, as you mentioned, I've been involved with for you know, about three or four months now, uh, quite heavily, but in an in industry that I've been following as well for, for quite closely for a few years, just given my involvement in, in sport as a whole. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to speaking about it. Um, yeah, things in, things in Canada are, are going well. We're, we're slowly in, in a deconfinement stage and, and hopefully our lives return to normal sooner rather than later. Right. And the weather in Montreal is good? Oh yeah, it's fantastic. It's summer here. <laughs> Fantastic. Our second speaker is uh, coming from South Africa, and it's Gareth Cortier. Gareth uh, is uh, is uh, a, a student from our course uh, in the 2019 edition of the uh, Nelson Mandela University and CIS. And Gareth was uh, the leader of the group that won the prize of the best project throughout the network of 17 University of, of the CIS. And it was a prize, it was a project that was focusing on the creation of an African eSports League. And uh, we believe that it was very interesting to have um, uh, one, one voice from, uh, from, from this group uh, by its leader was a, an outstanding student uh, uh, from Gareth uh, and to, to know a bit as well the impact Esports uh, add in uh, in in the African continent. So, Gareth, uh, uh, how are you, and uh, how is the situation in, in South Africa at the moment? Hi, Pierre. Um, I just want to express my sincere gratitude for allowing me to be part of this this group and uh, to be involved in this complex uh, dialogue. South Africa has been through some unique challenges um, through this COVID nineteen pandemic, um, but we've managed to, to, to keep the numbers uh, down. And um, um, the, the weather has also been 
uh, on our side favorably. Uh, we are into our winter period, but um, it is not as cold as 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 as, as we are used to. Um, once again, thank you for this opportunity that I have, um, and I'm representing the Nelson Mandela University um, here um, on this webinar. Great. Uh, our last speaker today is Juan Diego Garcia. Juan Diego is uh, is uh, the uh, a regular speaker for the CIS network. He gave lectures in Spanish and English in all the South American countries, almost where we are in. And Juan Diego is uh, leading at the moment uh, one company that is running, that is really operating uh, esports uh, on, on the continent. And uh, we were very keen to have Juan Diego. So you're in Buenos Aires at the moment, where the situation is still quite complicated, uh, uh, I, I believe. How are you? And uh, uh, very many, many, many thanks to be part of our of our of our group. Hello, Pierre. Thank you for for the presentation, Alex Garrett. It's an honor to be here, and hi everyone. Yes, I'm in Buenos Aires now, in Argentina, and we are in lockdown for the last three months, and we are started, like Garrett say, the winter season in this part of South America. So this is going to be like the most bigger season for the pandemic. So for that, we need to stay at home. But we are stay, we are take care of and we are working. Like you say, we work in, a, in, in an industry we'd never stop. And the pandemic is, it wasn't the challenge. Yes, uh, I, will, I will probably start to continue exactly what, we, what you just said. One of the strong, evolution we have seen over the years has been the, the importance of esports for the younger group. Uh, I, I experienced myself, not being from the same generation, but I experienced in the last two, three years that uh, throughout the FIFA Master and throughout our projects worldwide, the number of students involved and interested in the development of esports has been strongly increasing. I mean, we had our first esports final project in the FIFA Master seven years ago at Lookout. And now many people are working on that. It's, it's huge. And we saw that uh, recently the Olympic Committee has been interested to develop the elements, particularly with the Youth Olympics. Many, uh, many other sporting federation has been interested. Last week our webinar was about motorsports and we saw that in the motorsports uh, the 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 esports are increasingly important so during the pandemic sports stopped but esports grew this new evolution how do you see its impact at this moment i don't know juan diego maybe you are directly working in the industry can you talk about numbers, about figures, about ideas. What does it mean today, esports, and particularly on the South American continent? Yeah, um, like you say, many people talk about what happened with esports now. Um, um, this is going to be the one of the most important markets when the pandemic is stopped, when the pandemic is finished, it's going to be more stronger. Uh, the esports is going to be more bigger because the people are in home is watching esports because it's the only live event in television or in the streaming. And like everybody knows, and the media know, and the sponsor know, the live transmission, the live game is very important. Uh, and for that, uh, our industry never stopped because we play online. Um, we we only need internet in a different connection in, the, in different homes or in the gaming hub when the player are playing the professional leagues. In, in Latin America, we have a strong market. We have a very big market with a great audience, but we don't have a great professional market. For that, the professional league who play now is, is more strong because they have more audience. It's the only live show in, in this moment. Great. Uh, Alex, tell us a bit about, about the Canadian reality. Yeah, I mean, uh, esports um, in, in Canada, you know, was in a, a fairly strong position before the pandemic. Obviously, now I think the outlook is is far more positive. Um, I think you're talking about, you know, four, you know, four million fans, give or take, 
um, in a country of 36 million pre-pandemic. Um, and they're expecting that obviously just due to the realities um, of what's gone on in the world and the current climate uh, for that to, to grow exponentially. So you're seeing, um, again, my area of expertise is a little bit more on the, on the commercial side um, and on the partnership side. So um, you're seeing an increased number of brands who are trying to get involved in that space um, brands who were already activating in esports are uh, are seeing um, kind of accelerated growth and return um, on those investments. So it's been a it's been a very kind of fascinated per uh, fascinating period. It's also been interesting to see how uh, some of the traditional sports um, organizations, so you look at teams and leagues, um, have kind of doubled up on their efforts in esports again given the fact that there are there are no traditional sports being uh being played at the moment or, or or at least very little and they need to find opportunities to still you know engage their fans um you know uh, grow their fan base uh try to drive rem revenue make goods for sponsors um there's there's a lot of stake right now so it's um it's you know it's 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 a really fascinating time to be honest for esports yeah and you you touched a point we will we will speak about in a few minutes but engaging the fans uh, became during this this period of the pandemic very central but we have seen over the last years it was always a point the esports were focusing on we are more engaging to the to the young audience more uh, interactive what what traditional sports are not i mean gareth i, I, I for the, continent our general idea is to to not connect put together esports and africa well uh, in the work you were doing you showed that the, the, the demand is large in africa as well am i right and what did the what did the the pandemics uh, uh, add on that uh, yes um the 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 this there's obviously been a, a demand for with the with the lockdowns, especially with our level five lockdown, people are not uh, allowed to travel freely, or um, and and that in the sense has has forced people to to go digital. Um, the, however, the greatest challenge here is that is that um, a lot of people do not have access to to to, to proper internet. And um, so, f infrastructure development is, is 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 one of those areas where where we need some 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 is a matter of concern. Um, um, within within South Africa um, and Africa as a whole, um, we must understand that that that, that Africa is is, is mostly uh, rural populated. Um, the rural areas are very much populated, um, and uh, esports, in a sense, are, are more played uh, where there's in the in the main major cities. Um, so these are the challenges that we are faced with. Um, yes, esport has has obviously been um, mar marketed. Um, um, during the sense, people are becoming more aware of esports within the African continent, and um, we find ourselves that that that, that um, the it's esports is a sport for millennials, and then more younger people are getting involved with 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 esports, um, and 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 that is that is a, a positive from 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 our side. Yes, I, I think you you touch two points. One is is uh, technology, and the one and the second one is urban habits together with with esports. And, and I think th these are elements uh, uh, we are really to, to to imagine when we talk about esports. Well, uh, we wanted in this debate to have a representative of of of, of women, and uh, uh, we we invited two two. Uh, Two colleagues who unfortunately couldn't make it, and one of them, uh, Zeynep Gentaga, a uh, former uh, alumni of the FIFA Master, who is very involved in the in the course. Uh, she 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 made the point when we when we were preparing this, the, the, this uh, uh, 
uh, this webinar and she said maybe the pandemic showed, has shown to the world the new trends esports is bringing that traditional sports are not bringing and that's the interaction with the public. Uh, we discussed last week the fact that one sport which is Formula E in, a, in, 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 the, in the cars industry, is trying to make the link between traditional car racing and involvement of the fans through uh, technology. Uh, so how is the dialogue developing in that? For example, for sports like football, for sports like cycling, with some new innovation. Do we see new innovation from this point of view recently? Who wants to start? On the new I, innovations. Yes, please. I can start. Yeah, Pierre. Yeah. Um, you talk a great topic because one of the things, what happened with the sport um, in this new area, um, they make an inno innovation in different system for a great athlete or a great uh, knowledge about the, the result for the games. But what happened with eSport? What happened now if we make a new innovation, making the, e the sport in, into the eSport? Um, because we have a technology. We, we are innovation. We are the new area in, the, in, in different way. What happened with, like you mentioned, it, the, the Formula One, now the the pilots are making Formula E eSport or, or E Formula One is playing now because they need to make practice for a new technology. And and in that way we are making a new a new knowledge about the technology from eSport between the sport. And and this is more bigger because uh, one of the things the, the sport looking uh, they look everything innovation. Why? Why the NBA have the NBA 2K or FIFA have the FIFA with electronic art? They make an innovation now in eSport. Yeah, that, that's that's some of the uh, of the question of the innovation. And is it not talking as well about a cluster, a yeah. group of people that is going out of some of the main sports? And eSports seems to be very confined to a certain cluster. Still now, am I right when I, when I when, when I say that? I don't know if you experience in your in your areas, Alex. Yeah, I, th I think um, from a from a demographic point of view, for sure, um, it uh, it definitely trends um, in that you know Generation Z, um, even whatever the newer generation is. I, I don't remember the, the name of it, but it it trends very young, and uh, for sports properties in in particular, that's very appealing because. Um, they're trying to breed these new generation uh, of fans and esports. As I mentioned before, um, it offers that that perfect opportunity to uh, to uh, to connect with uh, with those very you know very important demographics and ultimately hopefully convert them when when traditional sports are back um, into into fans of either their you know their their league their their team their athletes. You know you're seeing professional athletes being engaged more and more. Um, in you know in traditional sports to participate in esports events uh, and competitions and again it's all in the in the objective of um, of you know converting whether it be traditional fans to esports or or vice versa so it's it's you know it's 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 very interesting um, and it's it's given uh, traditional sports an opportunity to accelerate their kind of diversification efforts yeah but we saw we saw on that just before. Yeah. Uh, we saw that some problems, for example, some some Formula One drivers refusing to to race and having problem based on that. Yeah, clearly, is it not putting some problems? Well, you don't think. Sorry, I'll I'll just say a couple lines on that, and I'll let someone else jump in. I think that technology. We we discussed technology very briefly. I think that plays a huge part in the kind of in the ethics um, of the sport. And I think that's how the, the sport will, or esports, sorry, as a discipline will continue to grow. Um, because to your point, I think there are still question marks about um, ethics. And I think also some of that comes from perhaps a lack of, you know, overall governance um, of esports as a, as, a, as a discipline, which is also, I think, a very kind of hot topic uh, in the industry is how do you regulate something that is so 
unstructured and fragmented and um, lacks a little bit of, you know, organization at times. So, yeah. Sorry, guys. And, uh, uh, Gareth, on that, uh, I know that in your research, you, you, made, you made absolutely clear that one of the key problems we, you found in Africa was the gender diverse. The age was an issue. Gender is another one, isn't it? Particularly on the African continent. Yes, for sure. Um, our, our research has, has, has shown that 85% um, of our respondents were male. Um, and we, 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 we can clearly see that, that there's a lack of, maybe a lack of interest from, from, from um, from the women's side, from from female side, but one must also understand that 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 gender discrimination and masculine influence of power um, is still reigning within traditional within the traditional sport industry. And once we, unless we deal with with these sort of issues, um, um, esports will not esports will just follow suit. Um, and be victim um, like any other sporting code. A typical example, a few weeks back, we had a webinar on, on women develop, football development. And, and if, if we're not going to tap into that to, 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 to um, make uh, esports awareness um, more, uh, uh, bring it about so that people understand, especially women, then, then we will have these challenges that we are faced with in football and in other sports. I think that's that's a great issue. I mean, it's just uh, looking at as well how to make esports more open to groups that are not because esports is still connected to games to 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 games where you kill people uh, with your computer, <clears throat> which are generally meant for for men and not for women and uh, uh, the, the the question of of gender equality in sports is, is a very strong uh, element uh, for esports as well i will go with our first question which is from a current fifa master student uh, diego martinez who is uh, who is at the moment uh, in chile in santiago and diego is do you think that uh, is asking do you think that at the moment every uh, or most of the international uh, federation, sporting federation, should just have a digitalized version of their sports and make a game out of it to be relevant for the younger generation. Can I start? Yes, Diego, please. Um, I think we need to first discuss about we, we are working about eSport like an audience or many players. Uh, the, 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 the sport, the traditional sport, they need players. They need more and more players in the international federation. And eSport, our, our market is an audience. Know how many people play, how many people see the different eSport competition. That is our, our market. If, if we're working with the traditional sport, I think n not all the sport need to eSport uh, area uh, because they have a different business. They have a different development from the sport. Yeah, I, I think your point is, is about watching the esports is, is a key element at yeah. the moment. For, for the, our, for our the, market the is watching the esports, yeah. Yeah, and not playing the esports. Yeah, uh, that's, that's probably an, 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 interesting, an, an interesting issue. Uh, you, made, you made a point earlier, uh, Gareth, about the difficulty to have players. Uh, do, uh, on the African continent, uh, what are the way to to challenge it at the moment? I mean, to have women, you gave some very interesting element, but any other other way to get a good good uh, formation of top athletes, basically in esports as well, because the, ten, the idea is always Asians, North Americans will be the the and 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 and, and Europeans are at the moment uh, when you when you you think about the, the top players? Um, look, Pierre, um, Alex has mentioned earlier on about the, we need a statutory body that will, that will regulate all these things. Joan was talking about um, the, the different um, role players um, that's involved with esports. 
and um, um, when we look at when we look at all these things, who, who regulates these things? I'm, I'm I'm going to come back to I'm just building up to the question that you, that you just asked me. Um, how do you how do we regulate um, the esports? Um, if we look at if I can if I can use boxing as a as a code, we have different uh, federations in boxing. And um, and then it's a struggle to get a unification bout between two champions, and we don't want a similar situation with esports because it's like um, who benefits out of it? Um, are the is it the athlete that benefits out of it? Is it the the, the esports developers, um, the program developers? Uh, is it the promoters who are benefiting out of it? Um, so where do you where do you draw the line and say um, the athlete will benefit out of the out of out of all this m m millions that's been generated because there's we all know that esports is the fastest growing sport in the world at the moment um, but if we go down to the grassroots level um, without an athlete there cannot be any sports played any sports if the athlete doesn't participate, then their sports doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So my, my point, what I want to bring across is that before we even, before we even look at um, uh, means and ways to, to promote the sports amongst the existing players and, and, and bringing awareness, marketing uh, esports within the African continent, we need to have a statutory body that will be able to control, like Alex was saying, we will be able to control all these measures. Mm -hmm. Yes, if I can, if I can um, mention something is that uh, a typical example, if we want esports to grow within an African continent, we need to start at grassroots level. And I'm a, I'm, an, I'm a champion of, of sports development at grassroots level, because there you can just build and you can develop youngsters. Not everyone will be interested. Some will become players, some will become athletes, others will become fans, like Joan was saying. Others will become fans, um, but that will, that will increase the interest of, 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 of all role players. Um, where do we start here? I think we start. We can start at um, having informal school leagues, um, informal structures, leagues in in schools. But then the other challenge would be who will fund all these leagues. Um, that's a major. That's a, that's a major challenge, and yes. um, that is where we can. That is where we can start and promote the sport. That's that's absolutely that's absolutely fascinating. We can see that football has tried to have uh, esports inside the federation. Some others yeah. may 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 think it differently. Uh, I would like to to continue on, on the same line uh, of what we said uh, until now, looking at two of the main problems that has come. One, every time we speak about esports, generally, we speak about the difference between the players and the audience. I think one of the key debates that has been very long over the last years has been the problem of obesity and people uh, being uh, watching and staying in front of computers. The case of Korea has been very much touched upon. The country with the highest uh, computer literacy in the world where kids play a lot of esports and what happens is there are clinics now to 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 allow them to basically go back to forget their computer for a while and do other things that are playing esports and and watching it uh, that's one of the realities that that has been uh, uh, very strongly discussed about the the role of esports in about the the passive element uh, juan diego was talking about so that, that's one of the future problems we may, we may discuss. The second one is definitely connected to the pandemics and it is going out of the house and it's very much connected. It's not always staying in front of, this, of a screen. People spend so many hours in front of a screen. Uh, sports and screen, you know, can we imagine esports that are as well making people more fit? 
And then we have a lot of questions to to answer. Anyone to, to anyone on that? Because there, there is a lot of demands actually. Yes. Who I'll, wants to say I'll, about? I'll... Yeah, I'll, I'll start. I think technology has a huge role to, to play, obviously. I think that I'll start with your point about uh, the pandemic and, and the, the issue with, you know, people staying at home and not, not leaving their homes. I think that one effect that it actually has had is it's provided an outlet for people to actually have social interaction in a safe way. Um, so I think that it's been, it's been positive in that manner is that, you know, in a lot of countries where confinement rules um uh and directives government directives have been um you know very um very serious um esports has provided an outlet for people to have that type of I think that that was um that was a um, uh, you know i think a positive for esports during during the pandemic amongst many other um in terms of your point about the issue with um with physical activity or the the lack thereof um, for you know esports gamers and just that community um, in general, I think technology will have a role to play down the road um, in making some of these um, you know these titles uh, perhaps a little bit more active. Um, I, I think that there's a category called active esports um, that leverages already leverages kind of physical movement. Uh, using technology to play these games. So I think that that has a huge role to play uh, long term. Um, I think especially as you look at, you know, maybe less the, you know, the the um, the first person shooter titles, but uh, you look at some of the more traditional uh, sport games. Um, and I think that's where you'll see some movement technology really playing a part in making those games a little bit more demanding um, physically. Yes. I, I Please, please continue. Sorry, I'd like to mention something about the obesity that you, you talk. Um, because, for example, in Latin America, when we, you talk about esports or gaming, the first idea who the people have is, oh, it's, it's obesity, the people, the, the player never making a sport, it's in home 24 hours per day playing with, in the, with the laptop or whatever. But we have three different segments. We have professional players, if you are professional, you are a professional athlete. Completely. Yeah. You have an amateur area in Latin America is the most bigger. The most bigger part of the market is amateur. And then you have the audience who like to see the professional gamers. But if you are professional, you are a, a, a great athlete, physical, mental, nutritional, whatever, like, like a sport, like a basketball player. Absolutely. And, and, and we need to change the, the, the concept that the gamer is the, with the obesity or they never make any sport. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, saw, I saw some interesting thing about obliging kids after a certain time that, that the thing would leave and etc. to oblige them to do some sport. Well, let's move to, uh, to uh, other Pierre, uh, Yes, Gary. Sorry, please. Pierre, can I, can, I, can I just come in here? Um, with regard to the well-being of, of your athletes, it is, it is important that a collaborative approach is taken here. So you need all stakeholders, including the medical fraternity, to come on board and um, so that these athletes have a balanced life, um, have your professionals involved, come on board. And that is why it's important that you, that you have a statutory body like the IOC, like FIFA, and your, that will be able to control um, these these sort of matters. At the end of the day, it's it, the import the, the the well-being of your athlete is important. Mm -hmm. So so strategic partnership plays a key role in the in the well-being of athletes. Um, there's there's research has proven that that that. Um, uh, Obviously, if you if you stay in front of a computer for too long a period of time, and you you use your hands for too long a period of time, there are there are medical implications, the health risk, and that is why you need to we need to have a collaborative approach um, in dealing with this with this matter. You're absolutely right. Let's move to yeah. we have we have a lot of, of questions. The first one comes from. Uh, Mazar Ahmed and Mazar was asking how much TV coverage 
did eSports get during the pandemic in your own area? Is TV viable or, or are we headed into a complete digital only? Well, the second part is a bit not necessarily about, about eSports, but, but <laughs> how does it work? How does it work with the, <clears throat> with, with, were there visible eSports on television during the, during the pandemics? Um, can I, can I start? Sure. Um, the TV lose the, the 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 normal television lose in this in this like three four months. The most bigger product for them is the live product. The live transmission is is one of the most important things for the TV. And the only live transmission in this month was the esport competition. And for that, for example, in Latin America, the TV channel by different esport league to make any in the broadcast from them. Why? Because they need live transmission for different sponsors because they have different agreement who make in live transmission. And for that, in our market in Latin America is going up. We, we win a new step in the television market. No, that's, that's, that's interesting. That's really interesting in, in understanding the new panorama of, yeah. the, of, of the sports and, and sports and media. Because it's yeah, but our market, our market is not in TV. Our market is in in Twitch, is in YouTube, is in is online. But yeah. for win, like uh, uh, we need to change the concept. The television, in for example, in Latin America, is very strong. Today is very strong, and we need to put the sport in television too. Yeah. How is it? How is it, how is it in South Africa? Did, did we see some? Um, yeah, Pierre, what's happening is that 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 um, eSport was initially followed um, through online platforms like Juan Diego was saying, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, however, in South Africa is that uh, South African broadcaster, multi-choice DSTV, are now presenting games to its television audience through Jinx, which is an eSports channel. Um, uh, which is obviously uh, much less in the numbers of European and, and American um, streamer counterparts. The, the major challenge here is that, is that um, multi-choice or DSTV is a pay-per-view um, channel, which means that the poorer people, the people at grassroots level are marginalized. They are not exposed to... to 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 the to, to esports whatsoever, and and this is the this is the disparities and the inequalities that we are faced with in within the African continent. Um, the rich, um, the affluent esports. If the perception is that esports is a sports for the affluent, um, and and um, people would rather put bread on the table as opposed to paying for um, for multi-choice or viewership and to, 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 to watch DSTV. So these are real these are real Challenges. issues that we are faced with within within the continent. Great. No, it's 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 a very good point. Thanks, Gareth. Alex. Yeah, in, in, in Canada, I think the issue is there's there's limited distribution, I I'll call it mass distribution on um, on television here of esports, even throughout the pandemic, um, there's a few um, I'll call them niche, small channels um, that uh, that have been broadcasting esports competitions. But I, you know, I tend to believe that without the lack of physical, engaging competitions, events in esports, there's still a. a you know, I won't call it a lack of interest, but maybe a, a resistance by some of your bigger broadcasters, at least the Can in Canada, um, to invest in uh, what's required to broadcast those types of, of competitions on TV. Now, all that to say, I think that, um, you know, all of the stakeholders in the industry are still very much pushing audiences to digital channels, which I think has a part to play as well. Um, you know, consumers and fans and players um, you know, that are involved in esports know that, um, you know, the best place to, uh, to be viewing is, is through, through the digital, um, the digital sphere. So, 
um, a, a few aspects there that I think affect why it, it, it hasn't necessarily taken off on, on traditional, you know, broadcast media. So it's great because the next question you answered it before I asked. So okay. Ian, <laughs> Ian, you, you, you don't have to ask you. Uh, uh, Alex, Alex answered your question. So uh, thank you very much for Thian. Uh, uh, Stanislav Shipkov will be one of the students from the 21st edition of the FIFA Master starting next next uh, autumn, and with a regular of the, of the web of the webinar. Uh, uh, Stanislav is asking. Uh, which values will esports be willing to bring that sports maybe not giving today? Like, uh, what what is it bringing regarding empathy, decision making? What is is bringing it into team working? Uh, these are issues probably that where 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 esports has a role to play and has to uh, a definition to bring. What do you think? I think it's very it's very similar than a traditional sport, a traditional athlete. They have passion, they have support, they have teamwork, uh, they have effort. Many values you can find in the basketball player or football player. Mm -hmm. it's no, and what I think was very interesting: some 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 innovation were taken a long time ago already. I mean, if I remember that uh, the 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 the, the, the well, the Player Football Association, the PFA in, in England, started more than a decade ago to have agreements to have kick racism out of football uh, at the start of their game to develop, to have some very positive messages of, uh, and esports played. I mean, some, some survey were made, we clearly showed the impact yeah. the game had on, on changing the attitude of the kids, to you know that it, it's uh, e games and esports were very important from, from this point of view. And I think there is a lot to to develop on that about the kind of messages that can be developed, particularly uh, particularly connected to to some of the current debates. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For me, is is like you say, yeah. Uh, how do you deal with referees in esports? The question of referee. No, no. When you say the, the professional league, like for us in LBP or in different professional league in, in worldwide, when you say we have referee, the people are like, what? You have a referee? It's like, really? Yeah, yeah. We have referee. We have, uh, because it's a league. You have player, you have team, you have referee, you, you have broadcast, sponsors. It's the same. Uh, and the referee is watching the 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 TV or the the computer watching the game and making the rules because it's uh, in the in the, in all professional league you have rules that rules have referee who making a good a good game yes. and it's very interesting because the 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 referee in esports they need to know about esports like football like basketball is it's very similar. Yes, what what I'm what I'm very interested to discuss with you for the next ten minutes that we have uh, is about this fight we have at the moment between the arc. The, some people, I mean, Zeynep and we prepared said the archaic uh, vision of the traditional sports uh, mm -hmm. opposed to the new ways uh, esports are understanding how the society is changing. Uh, th these dialogues, that's why we wanted to use this word dialogue between sport and esports, uh, is necessary to develop something which which will be a sport slash esports new reality when they work together to build up a, a, a new elements. I mean, how much, how much at the moment do you see uh, the traditional sport understanding their needs to have esports i mean uh, juan diego you work in the industry uh, alex you work in the industry uh, uh, and gareth when you did the survey it was absolutely evident that that you were dealing with that we know that esport is investing a lot i mean emily was uh, uh, was invited as well she she focused on the ideas about csr projects involving esports there are some very interesting uh, elements uh, from this point of, of view as well to to imagine the impact they, they can have a, uh, to, to improve the quality of our society 
uh, in these days, uh, the in the balance between esports and sports seems to have been uh, clearly moving moving one way. Do you see in your daily life uh, people from the traditional sports industry involved? May they be sponsors? May they be television? May they be di directs? Are they coming to to you and say, "Well, we should work together"? Is it something you're experiencing at the moment? I can jump in. Um, yeah. I think that you know what I've seen is it's not really um, one versus the other. It's uh, you know one is the extension of the other. Um, so it's finding ways to uh, play in you know both those spaces. And again, I, I think I'm speaking more on the uh, on the partnership sponsorship side. Um, the um, you know it's it's. You know, from my experience, at, at least looking at more traditional sports and then their versions um, of, of games in the esports world, it's about finding ways um, to tap into both those environments, not necessarily one versus the other. Um, like I said, it's it's very much an extension, um, and that's where you get the most value. I think yeah. they need to be an extension. Yeah. In, in, in our market, you have the publisher. Then you have the team, when the, that team play in the professional league, then you have the, the channel when you put the, the content for live transmission, you have the sponsor, and then you have a company who make the league, the professional league. Um, it, it's very different than a sport, but they need to be an extension because in that way, it's going to be a more bigger market. Yeah. Uh, for, for on, on that question, there is, there is on that point, there is one question from one, one other of the current uh, FIFA master students, so they are very active on the webinar. They finished their classes last week, so they can now uh, watch. <laughs> uh, Isaac Wang from Korea, and Isaac uh, is 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 asking, how could you we make esports uh, e world have more proper governance? And they really follow uh, what what you say, uh, Gareth. And she gives a she gives a background and. A, and the reason why she asks the question, she says, one of the issues in, Tuesday, in, in today's news in Korea regarding e-Olympics was that game developers and publishers privately change the rule of the game. It's not common in the traditional sports and people concerned about it. International Federation reflect public opinion when they change the rule of a game. But it's hard to regulate in private esports company. What do you think about that? The fact that these are not international federations but private companies that rule it. Does it not make it terribly difficult to, to deal with a with a, a fair innovation in the games? Um, if I can chop in here, Pierre. Okay. Um, that that's why I was mentioning that good governance that underpins lateral thinking leadership is key to the success of the sustainability of an esports league. Um, history has proven that, that even within FIFA, the um, uh, match fixing um, and fraudulent activities that has been taking place, doping um, uh, amongst athletes, how do we regulate these things unless there's a statutory body um, where people are accountable to? It's like it's like everyone can just because everyone sees the esports is a is a growing phenomenon, and everyone can just get onto the bandwagon and see how they can make money out of it and 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 and, um, and benefit out of it, um, maybe at the expense of the athlete. Um, that is why it's important that like the IOC, like FIFA, and, and, and um, like the International Rugby Board, is that there are certain protocols and uh, that needs to be in place for you. You can't do your own thing and change the rules and think you can get away with it. That is why it's important that an international regulatory body um, uh, where common grounds are meet, uh, I mean, that 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 is 
controlled and it's not a free for all and everyone can just get onto the bandwagon and yeah. benefit from 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 it I, if i can just just jump sure. in I, I i have a question for the group and 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 i ask this in all seriousness because i i don't have the answer but um how do you how do you think that the community the esports community would would react to let's say additional governance um i know it's a you know it's a, it's it's a it's a community it's a world that started very much on the grassroots side uh -huh. and you know we mentioned the power struggle um you know the 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 publishers are extremely extremely powerful in this environment i i just i don't know how the community and and there have been a few failed uh attempts at building um uh you know um uh international bodies to regulate uh, the discipline. So that, that's kind of my question. And, and maybe it's, you know, it's, it's too big of a question to, um, to discuss on, on this forum, but maybe just some food for thought for, for you guys, but also the, the audience. Yeah. But it's like a, that, that you mentioned, Alex, is the main difference between sport and esport, the publisher and the international federation. Yeah. Two different things. The publisher is the owner of the game. If the owner of the of that game, an international federation is many federations around the world making new rules or new governments, and that is the the most bigger question. And, and the topic is is very huge. Yeah, but that's why, for example, it was interesting to see how some international federation try to be part of the publisher world and part as well of the uh, integrate their e their e e-sport inside their federation. I mean, to have uh, e-football, interactive football in the, the in the FIFA is an interesting move, which I not necessarily, well, that, that, that is not necessarily always understood, but, but clearly some of the ethical issue has to be, to, to, to be taken into consideration. Don't forget on the other end that the, that the question of doping, for example, is very important for the professional. Uh, because uh, there, there are some some of the use of some of of, of some uh, dopings that have been tested in many many games and e games, and that that's a reality that people don't necessarily see. We have more 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 a lot more questions, and I <laughs> have to be quick because we have to 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 finish soon. Uzama Ali is asking to what extent. Uh, Esports impacted professional amateur players in Europe and Latin America recently. It's a very good comparison, and I give you the example here. In in Latin America, we are don't have a professionalism. We are making between the amateur and professional. We are in that way today uh, because. Latin America have five years behind the, the Europe or Asia or United States in the esport development. For that, for us, it's, it's a great opportunity to make an, the best practice in, in this market. Europe is the top one. And in, if we were talking about Spain, in League of Legends is the one of the number one uh, esport league. And we are looking about what's happening in Europe with the professional player, but it's two different scene in right now. Mm. And I know that some leagues are willing as well to have more and more women participating. Are they doing? Or are they doing some efforts to increase the gender, the gender uh, 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 diversity? Yeah, um, in, in eSports, you don't have difference between sex. Um, you can, you ha, can have a, like a League of Legends team be, between women and men. It, it's the same. For us, it's a great opportunity to make a, a growing up in the women's market and because the, the, the development is going to be there. 85% of the players are men. Okay, we need to make what's happening with the women market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know everyone in the esports ecosystem has a role to play there on on um, on yeah. elevating, uh, promoting uh, women in esports. Um, I'm actually the the startup club that I'm involved with just signed a f their first all female um, CS:GO team 
And that's already, you know, it's, it's, it's been a great story for them to tell. Um, they've been approached by uh, businesses that are interested in um, now, you know, sponsorship or speaking engagements with these, with these women, because um, I think that it's something that is, that is needed. And, and it's interesting, you, you do mention that it's, you know, it's, it's inclusive in that way, um, where every, it's a level playing field, um, men, women, uh, age, uh, doesn't really, doesn't really, you know, doesn't really matter, but it's still for whatever reason. And, and maybe it's, 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 it's for cultural reasons, but uh, very male dominant. Um, yeah. like we, I think the, the, you know, we looked at the metrics of our, um, you know, who follows our clubs and it's, it's only 21% women. And I think that that's pretty aligned with standards across the world where you're looking at anywhere between 15 and 30% uh, both in terms of women uh, viewing, but I think also participating. Yeah, yeah, and 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 definitely it's interesting because we saw that all three you you are on this. Well, I I must I must I must like to to conclude now and really thank you because what we saw is is uh, first of all the the debate regarding esports is central in sports. We saw it with the with many of the the industry of esports is becoming stronger every day, but as well the interaction and the difficulty to, 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 to discuss with the two is interesting. Uh, thanks so much, and I think we will have to continue the discussion uh, on, <laughs> on, on many, many issues. Don't forget, if you have questions, to, to subscribe. Next week, we will be dealing with, with, a, with a different issue. Uh, we will be dealing with the centrality of sport in the fight against discrimination across the Americas. Uh, Thanks again and uh, have a nice week and see you Wednesday next week. Bye.